All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thinking Art live stream. I am Andrew Glessner. And Wes the Noir cannot hear. Can you hear me, Wes? I don't hear anything at all. He doesn't hear anything at all. He unplugged his headphones, maybe. We'll see. Stand by for technical issues, because why wouldn't we? I could hear you guys before Sam did the intro stuff, and now I don't hear anything at all. Oh, sure. It's Sam's fault. That's what I would do. I'd blame it on him. Can you hear yet? But can you guys hear me? Oh, yeah. You're being very annoying. No. <laughs> what? Are you... Fuck. Yes, I can hear you now. Can you hear me now? That is so weird. It's very strange. No. No? It... <clears throat> so, Wes? Sam, you can hear still, right? Producer Sam? Okay. Producer Sam can hear. James, can you hear? I can. No. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wes is... Wes, um, shit can is you broke. hear Wes? Now I hear. Hey, there it is. Can you still hear? Yes, I can hear you guys now. Cool. I feel like Sam does all this work. <laughs> he I, just crashes and burns like right out the gate. Oh, dude. Every time we do this, it's an hour of meticulous setup. I'm like, okay, we have it. And then the second we start, it's fucked immediately. <laughs> Well, what was extremely confusing was I muted my MacBook so I could make sure it didn't make any sounds, right? Yeah. And then whenever I realized that the audio wasn't playing back, I was like, oh, maybe it was something over here. So I unmuted this. And then out all of a sudden, I could hear everybody perfectly. But then I realized it was the playback that was like 20 seconds before <laughs> Ah, okay. And then I I got really confused. I was like, okay, what is going on? <laughs> My brain is scrambled eggs right now. Um, Did you have your shit plugged in your MacBook? Finally... Is that what happened? Did you have it plugged in the MacBook? No, I, I literally didn't do anything to fix the audio. It just randomly, either Sam fixed something on his end, or it just randomly started working. I think it was Sam. No, he's saying no. Okay. Uh, the good no. Sam above, he's telling us no. Well, anyway, let's try this again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Thinking Art Livecast. I am Andrew Glessner. And I am Wesley Malott. And we are joined again, our first two-time guest hey. with Mr. James Dean. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. You're welcome, you two-time and son of a bitch. for coming on. That's right. <laughs> no, I, I appreciate it. Uh, um, I guess we've known each other now for like, Three or four years now, right, Wes? Yeah, it's been uh, you know, longer than um I realize, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess it was probably back at least whenever we started like posting, you know, regularly on the YouTube channel whenever we first met. So I think you reached out um after seeing one of our shorts, I assume. Yeah. Actually, I I think I posted one of mine and it was like four or five years ago, and it was so bad. Mm -hmm. And I asked you for feedback and your response was something to the extent of, do you really want feedback or are you just wanting like a pat on the shoulder? And, and you were nice about it. You were very nice about it, but you also were like, you know, I'll give you feedback, but you know, it's, it's going to be feedback. And this wasn't all, it wasn't great. Let's put <laughs> so like, no, but well, like I still stand by. <laughs> no, no, I actually no, just no. talked to a friend of mine about that over the weekend. It's like, how many people like just ask for feedback when all they really want is like, great job, buddy. You know? Yeah. yeah so you could just metaphorically jerk me off really quick. That's really what I'm looking for. Just, just yeah. a quick HJ. Here, here's the thing, you know, like I, I can jerk myself off. So I don't need that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, they're bragging about it. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If you can't, Andrew, were you born without hands? I don't know. <laughs> Have you seen this? This is, <laughs> Is it gonna be a whole new stand-up routine for you? <laughs> it's gotta be now, I think. Just armless HJs. We're gonna make that work. It's fine. Yeah, I guess enough Vaseline so, could work. Uh, the last time you were on, James, you were making uh you had, no, you were you had just released a feature film. Yeah. Um let me see if I can remember this name correctly. Um Fountain. No, nope. the vengeful nun who couldn't die. It's so close. Wait, so <laughs> let's, let's let's see if Maniac Nun is in there. Well, that's that was in the short film. Let's try Fontaine and the vengeful nun who wouldn't die. 
Holy shit. Andrew might be the only individual who's ever got it correct. <laughs> I tried, guys. I tried. No, it was you were close. You were like maybe one or two words off. Most people don't say who, they say that. And either way, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's one of those names. Mm-hmm. It's a yeah. long name. It is. And honestly, you know, if you're going to make a film and you want to use a really stupid long name, that's fine and funny. But um, for streaming purposes, it's probably not the best idea just to throw it out there if anyone wants to. It, it, it's odd because like when you put um, a film on a streaming service, they want to make sure the font is big enough that it shows to the person on the icon. And then when you have a name that long, it's taking up over half your artwork and it just looks so stupid. Like trying you know? to read the Star Wars intro as a title. Yeah, I mean, yeah, right. no, no, I mean, seriously, I, I, that was, it's the dumbest thing to go back and forth on over, like, quality control, but they're like, no, it needs to be bigger. I'm like, it's over half the size of the artwork now. This is ridiculous. It's the entire poster. That's just. Yeah, yeah, so. But, no, uh, yeah, we, I guess we released that last January, so it's been a year. Yeah, it's been about a year, okay. I think, since I've been on Congratulations yeah. on one year. Thank you. Um, um, and, and since then, you have made a second feature film. Yeah, it's a uh, it's in post production now. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? For sure. Yeah, we so yeah so instead of going and shooting it over a period of nine months, which is just insane, uh, we actually the goal was three months, which is still pretty insane, honestly. Uh, but uh, we ended up doing it in thirteen weeks. And we cut the shoot days down from 29 to 21, which was, you know, that's a pretty, pretty respectable amount to cut down from. Um, mm-hmm. It's a, it's a revenge thriller uh, kind of in vain of blue rune with like a little touch of like death wish three, just for a little exploitation. Um, it's much more of a rooted film, like, you know, like, like in reality, as opposed to, mm-hmm. a, you know, a, <laughs> it's, it's not, it's not quite. What wasn't uh, realistic about Fontaine, the vengeful one who wouldn't die. I don't know. I mean, you know, as much as I love the kill with the chainsaw, like I, I, I 100% understand that it doesn't look very good, <laughs> but I had to have that in there. So I was like, I don't care. We're going to, we're going to do the chainsaw through the middle of the legs. And if we can't afford the proper effects for it, we're just going to make whatever work works, you know? And so we did, but it, it's I, the thing that like, um, excites me about absolution. It was formerly known as the old man. It's been renamed because, there's a movie called there's a old TV man. show called um, there's a movie. TV show called the old man. And there's a movie with Stephen Lang that just came out like, um, I think in December or November that was called old man, or it's about to come out. It's, it's in the horror. Stephen atmosphere. Lang, the blind rapist. Yes. 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 That guy. <laughs> yeah, um, he's in a new movie called old man. So we changed, we changed the title. Um, but like what I think is most exciting about that is I think that I was going for a completely different feel and I'm about halfway done editing it and so far i feel like i was able to really like really really hit those tones that i was wanting as opposed to just Mm -hmm. going and making like a b movie um i mean it's just like anything especially when you're when you're making a film not everything is 100 the way you wanted when you envisioned it or when you wrote it um but like it's so close and there's these moments where I absolutely hate country music. I I really do not like country music, but I've actually been using I'm country not a fan music. Either. I've been using a little bit of like country music and um that kind of that kind of tone or like western feel mm-hmm. a lot when I've been editing it because it's a much slower paced film. There's a lot of action and there's there's So yeah. when you say you're using it while editing, you mean you're using it as like temp music or using it to like uh you know I'll, like layer in as like it, background music and stuff. Right. It's a mixture of the two and then when I'm so it's a mixture of the two. I have temp music that is definitely like bluegrass country kind of feel. It definitely mm-hmm. can't be like true country country. I just can't do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. But like, you know, like um like like more of a bluegrass kind of um, you know, my I just had to I just had to shoot my horse because its foot was broken or whatever kind of music. <laughs> uh-huh. Stuff that doesn't make you feel like extra special, but um it's kind of heavier, you know, and it um slower in pacing. So I've definitely used that for temp music and then even when I've been outside of that and I'm just like getting in the mood to like edit, I, I use, um, there's a playlist on YouTube called country outlaw for some reason. I don't know. Um, and that really mm-hmm. kind of had like that. It was kind of a, a rock country sound to it. Um, <laughs> which is probably the closest I'm going to get to listening to country, but yeah, so I, it kind of just puts me in the right, 
mood to to edit it and then like i use that for the old man's um kind of theme and then the gang members have obviously a different theme because it's not going to be quite the same feel for them is it upbeat country uh yeah i mean i guess <laughs> like the rascal I, I, flats I, I, when the gang members kick on no see, see you lost me already right there <laughs> just life is a highway immediately that's depressing country music is good man would you be able, um, if, if we get okay. the rights to the the written the words? Would you be able to perform that for me, Wes? So we could put that in. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm in. <laughs> no, so I mean, like it's um, I love that it's so drastically different from Fontaine, though. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, it sounds a lot different. Oh, it's it's so different. And then, like after Triple Xmas, <laughs> I've I've actually considered maybe doing a documentary something just completely different again because i don't okay i don't want to keep doing the same stuff and i do love genre films and i'll always come back to them respectable those. but i i want to try different forms of storytelling and um you know when, when we were shooting something down in the city st louis here um we used a location it was an old abandoned um train depot and there was a homeless mm-hmm. man that was there and we ended up like paying him like 30, 40 bucks uh, to like use his place. It wasn't even his place. I mean, he's just like squatting there essentially, but like he was living there and he'd lived there for a long time. He had his own little setup and he had ways to like keep it heated and it was just the craziest thing. And so like it, that kind of made me start thinking about the homeless community and how they just go day to day. And I really think I may return back to that and do a documentary of some form which would be totally mm-hmm. different than anything we've done before. And it would probably be mi- mostly just me and maybe one or two other people involved, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. So that actually brings up a fun story. I've been wanting to do this documentary with a friend of mine for a couple of years. Um, and uh, it's based on the hermit of Port Fisher, who was uh, his great, great grandfather. Uh-huh. Um, basically he was like a famous uh, homeless person that lived um, at uh in kind of like a bunker like a random bunker and uh he was actually they're like 90 percent sure he was murdered and oh. the local um town like covered it up so it's a really fascinating story that i've always wanted to do as a documentary um but real quick just want to give a few uh shout outs um hugh is in the house um hey hugh uh Jow films hey andrew uh kt fitz and uh jonathan thanks for joining us tonight um if you have any questions for us or james feel free to drop them in the chat and we will answer them um so uh, you mentioned uh triple xmas yeah and that is your new upcoming film which you are currently running a crowdfunding campaign for do you I care am. to fill in everybody on what that film is about Right. So it's um, OK. So in a nutshell, <laughs> um, it's uh, Santa has a mental breakdown and s- decides to start killing people and not just people, but porn stars on a holiday. Th- <laughs> I'm watching Andrew shake his head like, OK, OK. So Santa has a breakdown and he starts uh, going on a psychotic killing spree and he starts targeting uh, porn stars on a holiday themed shoot, essentially. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, we, we do, <laughs> I'm in. We, we do 100% have, in. Yep. We, we do have quite a few um, real life sex workers who've either been in the industry or most of them are still in some capacity involved in the industry. Um, and so like that, and that's been something that like is outlandish of an idea and, you know, a slasher film as this is, the one thing I definitely wanted to do was make sure that we were depicting the sex workers um, not as just caricatures and not you, you know, I wanted to give them like a real, you know, I, I, yeah, I mean, like, I get it. It's a killer Santa. And, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's it's out there. But I did want to make sure that we at least could kind of, t- you know, bring that in and make that as realistic as possible. And it really just comes down mm-hmm. to depicting sex workers as humans, which is what they are. <laughs> and whoa, you know, whoa, really, whoa, right, right. right. Well, well, you know, like, well, like yes. I feel like, I, okay, listen, listen, I love slasher films. I love 80s slasher films, but like a lot of the camp, you know, camp counselors, they're all the same. Right. And I do love that kind of story. And I love embracing that, but I kind of want to ha- give all of these characters real backgrounds and voices and, not you know not just make it what people tend to like associate i think with sex workers um under all of the slashing and the practical effects and the gore 
Uh, there is like there is a subtext about the like dehumanization of sex workers. Um, it, it's amazing how if you look up what the like twenty five percent of Google traffic is pornography, right? Mm-hmm. But if you yeah. took a poll of everybody that uses Google, how many people do you think would really respond? Like we would probably all be like, yeah, of course. But I don't well, twenty five actually person. sounds pretty low. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I mean, you know, so. But like, I feel like everyone always wants to like talk shit about sex workers or especially online. It's crazy how many people have so many shitty things to say and it's work, you know, it's real work. (laughs) These are real people and you're, you're, you're being disgusting humans to them and stop it, you know? So like there is that, um, there's more to the story than that, but I feel like if I start to dig into why Santa starts killing these <laughs> these these people, it's it, it really starts to go heavily into um, spoiler territory. Okay, it, gotcha. it, we definitely we definitely ratchet up the what the fuck am I watching? I mean, like look who you're talking to. I made my first film was about a lesbian nun with a katana chasing clergy and Nazis. Okay, so keep that in mind. You know, we you know um, we have a killer elf. You know, so I mean, like we're yeah yeah it's gonna be fun um the goal is to make santa menacing and to play everything straight but some of the dialogue and some of the interactions are comedic but not leaning heavily into that because i don't think Mm -hmm. that always works when you try to be a b movie or if you try to be super funny if you try to force a a, a humor i don't think it works you know 100 percent and and i've seen so many movies where like they already you can tell like B movies specifically, you can tell yeah. they already thought their idea was kind of like wacko anyway. So they were like, no, we'll just lean into the, like the humor of it. And I'm like that. Don't do that. I was like, cause then you've got one of those movies where they're like, Oh, it's bad, but it's supposed to be. I'm like, that's fucking stupid. Make a good movie. Yeah, it's like I- when you take something absurd and you play it straight, with the absurdity, that's where it's like you can fall into it and you're like, yeah, okay. You can get sucked into that. But it's absurd and you're playing it absurd. You're like, this is absurd. Yeah. I I agree. And I, I think there's a lot of like, there's there's a lot of nuance to that. You know? Because mm-hmm. how far is too far? You know? I'm, I'm a huge fan of Splatstick. Like a lot. <laughs> I usually go back and forth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of Splatstick and the kills for this are definitely influenced by Evil Dead 2 and Dead Alive and just all kinds of, sla- you know, slasher films. Solid choices. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, um, and even, yeah, I mean, in, there, there's some that like you wouldn't even think that would like horror films that would have inspired something like this, but it's fun to kind of pick kind of what you want and tell a new story with things that you grew up on it's it's also i think incredibly difficult to make something original try to pay homage to something that you absolutely love and not just becomes completely derivative of it and Mm -hmm. just a cheap knockoff because come on like i was talking to someone about this the other day you know we're not you know none of us are argento we're not gonna out argento him you know with the neon lights Uh and the you know (laughs) I, I I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm gonna out Argento Argento. I'm sure okay. you're already trying with that room. I, don't even, I can't Christ. even tell you a, that's, that's a single I'm movie. Right. <laughs> I can't even tell you a single movie he's directed, sadly. Oh no, no. Susperilla. Susperilla. Oh, my God. oh, and did he do that? Yeah, he did that, that's probably one of my favorites. I mean I haven't yeah. seen it. <laughs> that no. He he did so many giallos also that are just fantastic. Yeah. You, you yeah. have to check him out for sure. And it may not be your cup of tea but oh my god man the, the... i did see that he like randomly um dropped a new movie like last october i think right like yeah, out of maybe. nowhere i think everybody was like really surprised by it i think you're right um i andrew I think... wrote uh baddest form never works uh good to acknowledge that red Lady hey, you had to learn that the hard way <laughs> um yeah i agree with that um it's funny <laughs> at least um I don't know. I feel like if you're if you're making a movie and it's like bad, maybe then you should lean into. It. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, um, I, so to, what? Who's Red Letter Media? They're a distribution company. Um, oh, okay. Well, I guess. I mean, it depends on who's who you're asking. I guess. <laughs> okay. No, I was just curious as to <laughs> what the reference movie was there. Yeah, who said yeah, that? They, Letter the Highway. They they put out films. Oh, okay. <laughs> they put out films. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Um, Eight people have seen them. <laughs> so, something that's 
something that's interesting that like bothers me is like it never okay so it never bothers me when someone doesn't know what they don't know because like there's so much that i don't know and i i'm 100 like i i know that there's a lot that i don't know and hopefully one day i figure these things out but i absolutely do not like lazy filmmaking you know if someone oh yeah you know i don't want to like dog anyone so i won't you know but like no really name bad. names right now no, no 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 i would never do that really well, can you, like, design? without naming okay i was gonna say without naming names can you give us an uh an idea of what you're thinking in terms of lazy filming really bad like, sound, bad sound design sound design or lack of sound mm. design like just using onset lack audio. of sound design yeah, l- lack of sound design. Big. Oh, well, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, but it's um, especially you know one thing budget. that I actually. Oh yeah, you know how many times I went to film festivals and I'm like, this is camera audio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You hear the wind whenever they're like doing running shots. Just oh, you talking about that? Just give me flashbacks of that. I don't even want to call it out, but that movie we watched at uh, the Smod Castle Fest. That's the one oh, I was thinking of. Oh my um, god! Yeah, that was rough. The autofocus trying to grab something. Mm, yeah. Mm, Oof. Mm. Oof. yeah. Um, it's kind of actually that brings up an interesting topic here, um, James. Um, me and uh, Mike, our sound mixer, we were having a conversation because um, have you seen Banshees of uh, I don't know how to say it, in- or an- Inishiran? I haven't. It's on my list though. In- yeah, in- it's, it's on my list for sure one of the things that struck me was the lack of foley in the movie Hmm. and i Hmm. brought that up with mike because he and i like are always arguing i'm like a fan of like little moves make sounds and stuff like that like if somebody's like moving you hear like the clothing rustle and mike and i always get into arguments and post about like how much is too much sound design because i love my sound design and mm-hmm. I was just blown away by the lack of Foley in um, Banshees. Mm. I also wonder how much, like everything needs to, and it's so hard to remember this because you get so excited and you want to, you want to push yourself in every aspect of filmmaking. But in what regard is it helping to tell the story? Um, right. The, the Sound of Music or the, what was it called? Um, there was a movie that just came out a couple of years ago where the guy is going deaf from playing Sound drums. of Metal. Sound, sound of metal. metal, sound of metal, sound of metal. That sound design in that it it did. Oh, scream. it's incredible! It, it's so good. And there's moments where it's just obviously almost completely silent, but like there's that humming. You know, there's that humming mm-hmm. sound that just builds and continues to go. But that's you know obviously that was used to tell the story they were telling. You know, um, yeah, it, that that's a tough one. Andrew For says sure. uh, the only time he's seen it work was a film called Lost Skeleton of Cadavera. Uh, <laughs> Space Cop by Red Light Media, great YouTube channel, but they didn't play their bad film straight and it's just straight boredom. Haven't seen it. I've, and he I've said, heard of it. Uh, audio plus sure. sound design. <laughs> That's my interpretation of those <laughs> that emoji. Um, so uh, coming back to uh, Triple Xmas, yeah. um, you had self-funded your previous two features, Absolution and um, Maniac Nun, correct? Yeah, yeah. So a little caveat and... to that is uh, Fontaine, mm-hmm. I completely funded myself. Um, Absolution, I had a couple people that were involved behind the scenes that helped um, my well, I had two DPs. I ended up splitting the because one just didn't have the availability to shoot as often as we needed. Um, mm-hmm. But the one basically paid for all of the craft services, all the food. And then the okay. other one rented a bunch of gear for a couple outside shoots. And it did add up. So, that so you know, they, they probably contributed about $5,000, um, maybe a little more towards the production, which, you know, that goes a long way sometimes. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hey, little things help. Yeah. And so um, you don't have to answer this if you're not comfortable with that. But in, in for those two films, like how much did they cost together? Right. So, uh, well, I mean, so Absolution is still in post-production and the majority of so costs. So still accruing costs. Oh, for sure. For sure. So um, between sound design and visual effects, because visual effects are probably going to be pretty expensive for Absolution. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, 
altogether between the two of those, I probably spent 60, 65,000, 65,000. Mm -hmm. Um, and the majority of individuals involved were all, um, volunteer. So that's also to be mm -hmm. considered, you know, so, you know, that, that adds up, you know, you start paying cast and crew. Oh and yeah. Obviously it just, it's, it, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we got we got really lucky with Absolution. Um, or maybe it was just me being so adamant. We got a market for free, like a real market, you know, like a shopping market. We got oh, okay. We got a diner for free. Um, we ended up getting a bed and breakfast for free. No, not a bed and breakfast, an Airbnb mm -hmm. for free. And that was the wildest thing. Like, I had this seventeen-year-old kid email me and asked if we if he could come and help out, and I was, you know, like. I get people asking me if they can come and help out on set a lot. And usually I'll tell mm -hmm. them no, or I tell them they can meet at like um, an event we're already doing of some sort. And then I can kind of vet them a little bit and see where they're at. And he's 17. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, you know, my expectations, I mean, to be honest, we're not very high. He showed up <laughs> and I'm, I'm just being honest, you know, he showed up and I will 100%. I, I asked him to come and help out with triple X miss. He's, he's at, he's in school, so he's not going to be able to, but I will have him on every single production from here on out. Anyway, his dad owned um, an Airbnb out in the country and it mostly fit what we needed. We had to rewrite it a little bit. It wasn't the farm setting I wanted. It's more of like a vineyard setting, but it was close enough. The wine farm. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, no. Yeah. I mean, like, so it wasn't, you know, uh, there weren't horses or anything, but I could, I mean, like, you know, for free and we shot there for like five or six days, um, had a lake and everything. So a lot of mm -hmm. that just came down to me networking, um, knowing enough people in St. Louis and asking for more favors, you know? Um, right. Yeah. So, but between the two, 65,000 is, is what uh, was spent or will be spent in total once the post-production is handled on absolution. Yeah. Well, I felt mm -hmm. you too. And you talked about the cost of visual effects because man, you wouldn't believe what we spent on a bunny. On a bunny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> Yeah, I bet. And so um this uh the new film, uh Triple Xmas, um <laughs> you were not funding yourself. Wes Wes just like kept that moving. Wes <laughs> <a> <laughs> I'm sorry, I it's the first thought that popped in my head. <laughs> yeah, no, what so, are you talking so, about me? <laughs> so even <laughs> even, with triple, <laughs> even with Triple Xmas, um the initial thirty thousand will pay for production. Uh, everything is going to be so practical um, effects. going uh, back a little bit. Um, yeah. uh, you decided to um, run an Indiegogo mm -hmm. instead of self funding it, correct? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, where did you arrive on the number, you know, 30,000 for your Indiegogo campaign? Is that the entirety of your budget, or is there, you know, is that like half your budget? Right. I fully expect to come out of pocket um, somewhere between mm -hmm. pr probably about 10 to 13,000 on the back end of that. Um, okay. My, my goal is. So you're looking about like 45 total? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, yeah. And, you know, like th that'll all, that for that one, it'll all pretty much go to a score and then just uh, sound design and mixing it, you know. Um, I have Slava. Uh, hopefully he'll be able to do this next one. He actually lives, well, he was living in Russia. He relocated to ukraine um and so mm -hmm. he he did a, an incredible job on fontaine um you know there's it's amazing though like there's small things even watching fontaine and listen to, listening to it now there's like i would have adr'd more audio than we adr'd you know okay um but it's just because you know you you start to pay better <laughs> closer attention to those kinds of things the more you get into them there was a little bit of echo in a few spots it's not bad but you know, and maybe do you have a really good sound mixer on set? No, <laughs> that's the issue. Uh, no, I'm gonna say having yeah, no. having a professional sound mixer is gonna yes. save you a lot of post production headaches. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's my little plug for Mr. Michael Mowen. Um, Big up some Mowen. Um, yeah. well, he doesn't live in the Midwest. There are a few that are no. around here also. Um, that would be nice to bring on board for sure. And you know, mm -hmm. the other factor is is that I have one individual who is a friend who has actually got really good at doing sound uh, for us. And the problem is, is he's not always available. And then also mm -hmm. he, um, 
So I can always tell depending on who did sound and how it turned out. <laughs> like I wouldn't even have to be on set to tell you who was doing sound, you know? Um, yeah. So something that's funny that you probably are going to appreciate is we're not just showing like, you know, like it's something that a lot of people I think to, seem to be really hung up on. There will be of course, nudity in triple Xmas, but it's not just, we're not, we're not making a porn and I'm also, still all in. <laughs> <laughs> and also not only are we not really making a porn, you know, like I love, I love R rated movies. I love like those late night movies, but the truth of the matter is, is that it still has to go through a distribution company and then streaming services have to be okay with playing it. And if you just go overboard with it, they're not going to, it's not going to happen. So there has to be some self-restraint. Um, but with that mm -hmm. said, where I was originally going to go with that is um, we actually have a cameraman. We have a, uh, a boom mic operator. We have a director and we have a PA that's also part of the film. So we're showing okay. them, we're showing them do their thing. And at moments, I'm gonna have the, I'm gonna have the person who's the boom mic operator actually recording audio there as well. <laughs> it's uh, a way yeah, to kind of it's it's a way to kind of work the system. So we'll be running two yeah. two of those. Um, and I don't know, maybe that'll help, maybe it won't. I th I think in some cases it'll be nice to not have to worry about framing out the guy with the boom. <laughs> yeah. It can't hurt. Yeah, yeah. A Andrew said, "Don't worry, AI sound is on its way." <laughs> It's it's crazy how good it's getting. It's coming uh, for our jobs. Yeah, uh, <laughs> take our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you use DaVinci yet? Do you use DaVinci? Or are you still not for editing, but I yeah. have been um I, I've started uh coloring in DaVinci and I yeah. actually you know the workflow going from Premiere to DaVinci was initially kind of daunting. Mm -hmm. But um, at least for the small projects that I've done, it's actually went really smoothly. I was actually mm -hmm. surprised at how smooth it went. The thing that kind of um, worries me is like every once in a while, you'll get random like translation issues. Like the scaling mm -hmm. doesn't translate or like um, warp stabilizer doesn't translate, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the kind of stuff that I, I don't, um want to deal with too much um well yeah but i i've started coloring in da vinci but i don't think that i'm going to switch over to resolve for editing unless i can figure out, out like you know like better workflows in resolve because like yeah. all my workflows are just like super they're very quick in premiere like i have like templates worked out i know i can do like the pancake timeline and it's just really simple to just like pull stuff and yeah. Yeah. It's hard when you're kind of already immersed in one platform to mm -hmm. kind of, and that's, that's, that's why DaVinci actually gives their software for most of their software, like 97% of it is like of their, of their editing software. It's free and they, they mm -hmm. keep 3% back. But the idea is that, you know, as a, someone younger or a student gets into it and then for 300, it's a lifetime, a lifetime software essentially. And then eventually, if you mm -hmm. get to a place, then you'll start spending ten thousand dollars on their boards to color. <laughs> you know, yeah. Which uh, yeah. not going to be me. I hope I, I I don't foresee myself being a colorist or anything. No. So. But I do enjoy coloring like smaller projects and like indie films and stuff like that. It's just like I don't think I would do it for like you know big budget stuff. Um, no, I just it's not what I want to do. It's not what I want to learn. Um. Eric Francis Melaragni is in the house. Hey, buddy. hey boys, Wes wears Minnie. I had to unfortunately keep Minnie out, otherwise she'll like start barking and going insane and take her over the screen play with her or take her out and stuff like that. So be the only thing we have on. <laughs> yeah, and then I'll just hold her up like uh, Simba in the Lion King. Let me to the Ooh, reminds me ooh. mine's been very quiet but if you hear anything screaming uh, uh, you know randomly it's her so and she's like right oh it's there. not somebody locked in your closet so now i just picture a dog on <laughs> <laughs> well she has she has a closing trachea so like it, it's very random and then it's like it's like a reverse sneeze like yeah it's really bad <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Sam's so like, what? is that just like really common in um small dogs? I, you know, this is I, I haven't had a whole lot of small dogs, and she um she was a rescue, so I mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, she's on medicine for it. She's a lot better now than she was, but I, from what I understand, it is pretty it is pretty common, and they. They start to collapse. I've heard a lot of Pomeranians have that, yeah. and I'm worried our dog will get it. Yeah. Um, hey, we got a question about uh, crowd crowdfunding in the chat. Um, so, when you budget the film, do you factor the crowdfunding rewards into the budget cost, or keep it focused on low slash no cost rewards? That's a good so question. I, yeah, I mean, like, so, so some of the rewards are pretty straightforward. Like, uh, you know, like if I if if we do an associate producer credit or if someone pays to have their song involved, you know, then obviously it's really no cost to us, you know, other than me listing them on IMDb and making sure they're included in the credits. Um, the one mm-hmm. thing blue, so we have Blu-rays, we have posters, and we have DVDs. Uh, those are the probably the biggest expenses. Um, and then we have a few extras like VHSs. Um, but I'm at a point now where I have multiple people um, around me that can make copies of the VHSs. So for doing five to 10 of them, it's not a big factor as far as printing the labels and putting it together and shipping them off. Uh, I, I think you definitely need to take into consideration any cost that's going to come about because you don't want to be eight months later and then end up with you know an extra thousand or two thousand or five thousand dollars you need to come up with you know right i I, I, this is my first indiegogo but i have been told that what they will do is um so a couple things i think some people don't realize is it's a five percent fee right off the top then it's also a three percent fee for processing each payment so you're already at eight percent right um that's right out the gate in addition to that this is a taxable amount. So you have to take that into consideration. Like anything you get, it is taxable. Um, Additionally, I was told that sometimes with some campaigns, Indiegogo will hold certain percentage of your funds for six months. And the goal I think is with them holding the funds is to make sure that you deliver on your, um, on your, your perks. Now I've Mm -hmm. read into that and supposedly it's different for every campaign and i don't know what exactly changes that i think if you've had multiple campaigns and you don't have the best response rate to questions that are posted or if you're not known to deliver on perks in the time that you have listed i think that reflects back on you and i think that indiegogo will take that into account and hold more of your funds um Mm -hmm. most of that i've read through indiegogo's site itself some of it is a little bit of speculation on my end but um, I know my my practical the guy that's doing my practical effects. He's worked with tons of productions who've done Indiegogos, and he said that has been an issue for a couple of them where they anticipated to get ninety percent of the funds right out the gate, and they only got eighty percent and had to wait another six months for that other ten percent. So that that's hmm. that's a factor. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as Indiegogos, as far as they go, <laughs> um, I think making sure you're ready, like to launch it is super smart i don't know if we were 100 ready um i wanted to capitalize on the holiday time Mm -hmm. um and what i'm in like i'm not talking about being ready with pre-production that's a whole different beast like that's the the, we're good on that being ready as far as the marketing materials um having a good network behind you of people that will actively reach out to others and Mm -hmm. um the one other little tip that Indiegogo will tell you on their side is um, I think if you, within the first couple of days hit 30%, you're something like 70% more likely to finish the campaign and succeed. So hitting that. And what that entails is you actually doing the leg work a month in advance and having people that will contribute day one. Um, so people are already ready. Like as soon as it goes live that morning, you already have 30 backers that are ready to go and put in whatever they're going to put in. I think those are really solid tips to, to help out anyone that's looking at doing it. Um, I also wouldn't, I think if we were going to do it again, I probably would have put 20,000 and I probably would have, um, then instead of the 30. And then, cause I think it's a psychological thing, the closer you are. And once you hit your goal, more people contribute. More people mm-hmm. jump in once they already know it's going to happen. Um, yeah, that's just the tips that I 
I think I've figured out and I've seen Chris Rupert run a campaign and I've talked to a, two other filmmakers who've ran comp- campaigns and have ran them successfully. We had um, um, Chris Rupert on here to talk yeah. about Transient uh, probably about a year ago now. Um, yeah. Really quick, I uh, just want to say hey to Artzilla Aisha. Aisha, thanks for dropping in. Good to see you. Um, so with... Um, with your crowdfunding, you said that you you think that you weren't quite ready. Yeah. Um, what could you have done? Um, I guess like beforehand to I guess like what would have made you think that you were ready? So, just being one hundred percent transparent up front, um, I mm-hmm. think that... I like transparency. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, the people yeah. appreciate transparency no, yes, as well. No, no, please I, I think, fucking lie to us. I, no, 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 no. I think there's, <laughs> I think there's a huge difference between the team that you necessarily make films with and the team that you may raise funds with, um, because some of the people that fair. I have made, very, very fair. Yeah, and everyone has different strong suits, and it is a very odd thing to ask anyone for money. If I'm like, hey Sam, hey Sam, I know you're sitting there just watching me, but will you go buy a Blu-ray? Like, come on, it's just it's triplexmas.com. And it's 45 bucks. Come on, man. You know, so like now later I have to look him up on Facebook and follow up and message him also, (laughs) you know, like that's, that's tough to do that. You know, like it's, it's tough to ask someone um, to believe in you and to pre buy something. And often like most Blu-rays cost $20. They don't cost $45, you know, so Mm -hmm. you're asking them to pay more. You're really asking them to invest in you. Um, So having a, I mean, that's the big thing right there is like, you're asking people, not to buy a Blu-ray, you're asking them to invest in you and yes. your product. One hundred percent. Yeah, 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 it, it, definitely. And um, having a team of three to five people that will every day reach out to a hundred to hundred and fifty people is really mm-hmm. what will help you to succeed on an Indiegogo campaign. Having yeah. that core having group. kind of like a social media manager or something like that that is just their sole dedication because you're you're I'm assuming that you're running the Indiegogo cam- campaign pretty much yourself. I am, and I, I have one or two people that every so often will, and I'm not I'm totally not discounting what they've done because I've had a lot of people <laughs> do little things here and there. Uh, the co-writer Louis Otero, who co-wrote uh, Fontaine. He, he's been sending out more and more press packets and he's been doing a lot of legwork with that. And he helped me rewrite the press packets. And, you know, like mm-hmm. I just wouldn't have had that time. We had it all ahead of time ready, but it wasn't, it wasn't quite, it could have been better, you know, like just like anything, just like a script or the first cut of anything. There's always revisions that need to be made. And, mm-hmm. you know, but like, so he's helped with that, but he also hasn't necessarily helped with, you know, messaging people directly. And again, not everyone's going to have the same same set of skills or just feel comfortable doing it. Um, right. One thing, one little caveat to that also is not just have the, the team of three to five, but everything I've read, the best responses for people contributing to your campaign will come from Facebook. I have pushed on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, and Indiegogo will actually break it down for you where everyone's coming from. And it'll mm-hmm. also break down if someone else posted about it. And then they'll send you, it'll show you in the diagram, like who posted about it and who followed that link, even though it's the same exact link, they can track that. And it'll tell you Mm -hmm. how many came from that, how many purchased. And um, Facebook is number one for sure. Easily. I mean, it's not even, it's not even get shit on Twitter. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's, it's, and it's actually got worse for me uh, in the last three months it's got it's uh-huh. definitely got worse yeah i i feel fuck like Elon. fuck musk <laughs> <laughs> i i feel I like the fuck musk i feel like fuck. i feel like part of social media is like i know to an extent what i could say that'll like generate people wanting to reply but it feels so insincere and it feels like i'm just baiting people to like you know, like it's it's always asking what's your favorite this, what's your favorite that, and then you know everyone responds, and that starts to build your numbers up, and then you keep asking the stupid fucking questions, and I don't know, it just yeah. it wears it wears me out. It's it just feels so disingenuous, and yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, I came to the realization today that I have to fucking start a TikTok after I met someone Ugh. at a party. No, I met someone at a mm. party. I know I met someone at a party Ugh. last night who goes by the gangster fairy. 
He made a video 12 years ago, 12 years ago. It didn't do anything. His friend posted it to his TikTok 12 years later, and it has like two point something million views. So it's right. kind of crazy because like uh, Andreas was telling, I had no idea this was going on, but like Andreas was telling us like uh, people were taking trick or treat and posting it on TikTok, and those TikToks were going viral. Like That's in crazy. addition to the, the yeah. you know, the the short films. Yeah. What well, he also crazy. told like, us, much, um... which I thought was interesting, yeah. he told us that uh, apparently on TikTok, the magician is just a goddamn thirst oh, trap. They were making those thirst <laughs> trap videos. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yes! I will be your spank bank material all day, everybody. The internet. Are you I, I, re- I really like, shouldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, I'm gonna get so many DMs. As, as Can you just send me that clip right there later, Sam? <laughs> you bet, man. Um, Producer Sam, yeah, you know who the fuck uh, pays you? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no one. <laughs> so, uh, but um, yeah, 100. percent Like TikTok and like short form content is a way to you know try to bring out uh you bring about more of an audience um yeah so i think it's smart to you know create i mean i've had so many people tell me to like create like a thinking art tiktok and stuff yeah. i'm just like and then it's another fucking platform i gotta worry about and i get so annoyed with like anytime i release a video or short film or anything just the entire process of like even posting about it because yeah. i just hate I hate asking people to watch things. I I just feel like you said, it just feels so like disingenuous, but I know that there are people out there that legitimately want to see it. Um, so I kind of, that does kind of make things um, take some of the burden off a little bit, but it, it just, it's just so, I don't know. It just feels like I'm being annoying and I don't, I don't, I've never liked that. And going, kind of going back to what you were saying about like having somebody um, to, you know, reach out to people constantly and, you know, market your Indiegogo and stuff. But that, that, those are the things that you have to do to, you know, have a successful campaign. Yeah. You, you know, what's interesting is it's really a numbers game and it's the most random mm-hmm. thing in the world because I had, I saw someone post on Twitter and I haven't been spending anywhere near as much time on Twitter and they posted that they watched Fontaine and I, you know, I messaged them. I said, Hey, you know, I hope you, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun with it. If nothing else. And, um, I said, and then I noticed he wrote for, um, uh, I mean, it's not a huge, but it's, it's a medium sized horror, uh, publication, you know, online. And I said, Hey, you know, we, we actually have a, a film that's in uh, pre-production and it has an Indiegogo. And I was wondering if he'd be interested in doing an article and he, you know, he responded, oh, I don't, you know, I, I don't know if we'd get it out in time uh, for the end of your your campaign, but mm-hmm. I, di- I will contribute to the campaign. And I was like, oh, I really appreciate that. That was not what I was asking him. 30 minutes later, I finally checked my email. I was like, oh, he's going to buy a Blu-ray. He came on as an executive producer. I did oh, not wow. know this guy from anywhere. And I didn't even ask him to contribute. I just, well, I mean, I was asking him to do an article, but like 1300 bucks. I'm like, holy shit, you know? Like, okay, thanks. <laughs> it's not nothing. Yeah, hey, that's no, shit. no. That's well, honestly, I, I people think, that believe in you and your project. I I think that out of everything, like when I look at other Indiegogo campaigns so far, we've had quite a few big contributions, and I think we've only done like forty five or fifty Blu rays so far, which forty one Blu rays, and I've had so many people come do on. I get a, do I get a Blu ray? I don't know. <laughs> Um, I don't remember. What I want a fucking Blu-ray, James. I <laughs> yes, want a they, Blu-ray. The answer is yes. The what do you is wait? Yes. Hold on. What do you need to do to get a VHS tape? Because I want a tape. You want to tape? Well, I mean, right now we're. <laughs> I mean, officially we're sold out on those, but I can make you a custom perk if you want. Mother, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're, contri- live stream. <laughs> if, if you're contributing, I mean, they were seven. They were they were they were priced at seventy five a piece, but I think they those were one of the first things that sold out. But I can always make you a custom perk if you want. <laughs> what about like a DVD? <laughs> no, no, no. The DVDs, have, the DVDs have been selling. I don't know. I, uh, those are thirty. So how about a yeah. how about a laser disc? Yeah, we don't do that. Betamax, <laughs> where are we at? God damn it! I don't have a Betamax either. I have screen worn wardrobe. A Boy, I thirty five millimeter print. Yeah. 
<laughs> really not a fan of these options. I don't think you're covering just, the bases just, as adequately as I would hope. Yeah, I do not like these perks. Yeah, I, I apologize, guys. <laughs> oh, I have you know what you know what Andrew? I think you would love is I have a be in the movie O Face edition where you record from home. That's it. That's it. You just record yourself basically having sex and coming, and it's going to go on a smaller oh my screen. God. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait, here's the thing. Here's the thing. What's great is I don't even have to get a new video for that. No, oh, you already have one. There you go. I have dozens. <laughs> I'm the only one in them, but there's dozens. Just got to post to the right platform. Scores even probably. I don't know. You know, we actually, we actually attempted to make a Pornhub and an X videos account thinking that we could try to promote it through the well, names. Yeah, sure. But I think you have to do verification videos now and uh, I'm not running all the social media accounts. And I, I don't think the people running them wanted to do verification <laughs> videos, but it was something like we really have tried to get creative with the way we've promoted this film. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, but I think that was the sticking sticking point. Yeah, go ahead, Andrew. I, <laughs> sticking point. Go ahead. Listen, I was going to so, I was going to be the bigger man. Here. You have you have kind of uh, a loaded cast in this. Um, do you want to talk about who you have um, in your movie? It's a very loaded cast for sure. And yes, I'll be happy to talk about it. Um, well, I mean, first of all, we have uh, Felissa Rose, who, you know, Sleepaway Camp. Yeah, she's, I'll tell you what, man, like, I, I spoke to her a couple weeks ago, and I don't think there's a kinder human being on the planet. Like, she is so incredibly sweet. I'm so pumped to to be working with her. Um, so exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, when, you know, we were talking about the role and everything, and she just, she was so open to it, and she wanted to know how I wanted her to play it. And anyway, um, we have <clears throat> Drew Marvick. Uh, and he's playing the killer Santa and Drew's been in tons of mm -hmm. indie film. He's also, uh, he also directed pool party massacre, which is definitely very much a, a B slasher film. Uh, he's also in that film mm -hmm. at the end. Uh, okay. So we have Dolly Lee. Uh, you know, you may, I'm, I'm no, Andrew knows who she is. <laughs> she, uh, she used to be, she used to be in pornos. Um, she, I think retired a couple years ago, but she's actually local to St. Louis. And, it wasn't someone that I had even thought to reach out to. And it turned out that I was friends with one of her friends and they brought, they brought her name up and said, I can reach out to her. And I was like, yeah, that would be fantastic. She's been amazing. Just in giving us notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. What is Andrew doing over there? He's That's taking... <laughs> spelled how Dolly Lee L E I G H. Dolly, just like partner llama. Perkins. Okay. <laughs> All right, you ready for some more? He's creating his beat sheet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, literally. All right, so the rest of these may be... Oh, is it going to be fast-paced? The rest of these may be fast-paced, but they also may only be on OnlyFans. I'm not sure. Um, but Jessa Flux, she's actually... So Jessa's actually been in a lot of... Uh, she, she's definitely like an up-and-coming scream queen. So she, she's she been in a lot of stuff. Um I can't even. I, so many films she's been in. Definitely, definitely in the indie space. Stop it, Andrew. Stop it. Uh, also, Morgan Thompson. She's also been in quite a few. And you can write producer her too. Sam is taking notes as well. <laughs> I we did we did an interview over the weekend with a local uh, place, and one of the girls that was in like there, she's like, "I want to be in your film," and she's like, "I'll take all my clothes off." I'm like, "Wait, what? What? How did this?" <laughs> I didn't even ask her. She's just like, I'll take all my clothes off. That's amazing. What's her name? Yeah, that's. <laughs> you guys are fucking. Her name, this. email number. Um, right. right. <laughs> we have, so we have, okay, sorry. You, you can put your pen down now. We have uh, Derek Worley. He's he's doing our FX. And oh, that one too. Yeah, he's slow. He, slow, yeah. Derek. <laughs> Derek Worley. <laughs> But no, he's he's incredible. He's done so many films, and he just he's so freaking popular right now, and so busy. It's crazy even trying to get him on a project. Honestly, um, mm -hmm. I mean, we have tons of other people involved, also local people. Um, the, so Jonathan May, who play he played our gang member slash cokehead. That's how he's credited on IMDb. <laughs> and Fontaine, he's uh, he's actually one of our leads. Um, he's a comedian. 
and in, in real life he's a comedian and he mm-hmm. so he, he brings levity to the project which is kind of needed and like a little bit of like sincerity um i don't know he's just he's, he's a really awesome guy i love working with him he's had cameos i guess in two of my films and he was the lead in high five i don't know if you saw that it was a short film we released a couple months ago i think i did yeah yeah no yeah, it's a um, odd little yeah it's anyway um but he's he was in that and i love working with him so i wanted to have him back i also i think it's i think it's fun to work with actors but like not i, I don't want to ever like like just keep them in one kind of role you know i want to give actors the mm-hmm. ability to act and so he's played a couple i of say actors. uh-huh but then i put andrew as the uh non-speaking killer in every movie that's very against type though because i mean non-speaking i mean that's <laughs> four goddamn movies <laughs> two of two of them are the same in the same universe you know yeah well if you think about it two and two are in the same thing i would say that um dilemma and killer be killed were very similar veins oh it well, well then that, that's five then <laughs> so i'm thinking killer be killed dilemma Stalked yep. and trick or treat. What are you thinking? Trick or treat too, as well. Well, I didn't count. That's the universe. Oh, uh, uh, got yeah, you got you, got you, got you, got you. I'm just thinking of things where I had yeah, I was... no lines and I killed people. <laughs> I mean, hey, if you're good at it, <laughs> yeah, you were great. At it. I love when you tilt your head. Oh, motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> see, I, I see your post. I, I, I was... see your post, Andrew. <laughs> well, and it's I was watching. Uh, I think it was. I think it was the Scream trailer, actually. And it was just like, yeah, it's always such the go-to where it's just like, oh, I want to be menacing. And it's like, okay, like, you can do other stuff. Like, I've done the, other stuff, and I there's no emotion on that mask. And the next one, you need to have him pull the robe up and just moon the people. <laughs> and then that'll give him something else to do. I'm going to show all y'all my front butt. Front butt? <laughs> Uh, really quick, uh, Justin is in the house. How you doing, Justin? Thanks for stopping in. Um, so uh, going back to your Indiegogo, yeah. um, you got Felissa Rose, which is a huge um, accomplishment. Congratulations on that. Thank you. How did you, um, one, how did the conversation come about that you needed somebody like um, Felissa Rose uh, in the movie? Right. And two, how did you get Felissa Rose, if you don't mind? Um, yeah yeah so okay so a couple things um when i was writing that role i had one of two people in mind and she was one of the two people i had okay, in mind awesome. for the role so it was it's nice mm-hmm. to be able to do that and then st- still like be able to deliver on that that was awesome mm-hmm. um absolutely so uh so derek worley knows her he's worked with her on several projects and uh also okay. and and you know funny enough like the only reason i know derek is because of the film hacks uh, our podcast where we interview filmmakers and we mm-hmm. interview people that generally in the filmmaking community and so i knew after interviewing him how passionate he was i wanted to work with him so he had mentioned her and i said okay yeah that's definitely something you know like I, felissa she's amazing you know um and so a week went by and i was like listen i i've tried a couple different options do you think just if i directly message her do you think that's a that's a safe way to go and he's like absolutely so i just directly messaged her and you know not you know i wasn't weird about it don't be don't be weird about it but you know hi felissa i'm a fan do you want to be in my movie where santa kills porn honestly i've never once told (laughs) anyone i was a fan of them when i've asked them to be a part of a project um and i mean like don't get me wrong i mean I'll, I'll I'll absolutely tell her I love her you know work I mean like of course but I thought you were just gonna leave it at love her <laughs> yeah. yeah no 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 like you know like I, I talked to her just like I would talk to anybody you know Year, years ago I bartended at an airport and I I fucking I met so many celebrities that came in and I actually uh-huh. carded uh Tom Hanks's son before I realized it was Colin Hanks I carded him oh really and like after the fact I was like well I'm an asshole but also I, I don't i think he was like 23 years old it's part of my job you know if you don't yeah. like it whatever you know like just treat i, I yeah, try to exactly. treat everybody like a human like i don't try to look down on anybody or put anyone up on a pedestal and in general if someone <laughs> wants to be put up on a pedestal i'm probably not going to want to be around them so it's probably not going to be a good fit on set i'm sure there's gonna be plenty mm-hmm. of those people i'm gonna come across <laughs> uh but yeah, so I so I just I, I told her what it was about. Um, you know, it's an 80s slasher feel, but there is a subtext to it. And 
that has seemed to resonate with some people for sure. Um, I actually brought on a producer who has been very, um, very active in trying to find a partnership with a charity for us to work with uh, okay, for sex awesome. workers rights. And the way he became involved with the film wasn't the gore, wasn't Felissa, wasn't any of those things. He was interested in the subtext about sex workers and like the, the, the kind of the commentary underneath everything. That's what brought him on. That's mm-hmm. what made him interested in it. And I love that he's, I love that Marcos is involved because you know, like I don't have the time to reach out to all these charities. I want a charity involved, but like when you stack up everything else that I'm taking on, it's just one more set of things that has to be dealt with. And, you know, so I think that in her case, she liked that also. Um, there were a few people I reached out to, sent the script to, and I know I didn't even mention like that there's a subtext of anything. Like Drew Marvick, I didn't mention to him at all. He read the script and we were talking about it and he could pick up that it's like a very sarcastic dark tone at times, but it's definitely there that like, I'm kind of making fun of this like macho man kind of, you know, like I, let's message all these women and send our dick pics. And, you know, like it's just, it's just nuts the way people it's, it's really crazy how guys it's pretty much always men are approaching women online, let alone anyone that's a sex worker. It's just, it blows me away. I didn't realize people acted that yeah. way. I'm so freaking naive up until like four years ago, probably. And cause like, I, it never dawned on me. Like, why would you do that? <laughs> I'm talking to you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> people are the fucking worst. It's like, um, seeing Lauren like tweet about like oh. some of the shit she's dealt with. Yeah. It's like the terrifier to ex- exposure. And it's just like, people are literally the fucking worst. Like what is wrong with some people? Yeah. Oh, and here's what's wrong with people. They're pieces of shit. And on a daily minute, you know, level, most of the time, that's not a problem. But when you take a big interconnected network where all the yeah. pieces of shit can talk together and become bigger, bigger pieces of shit, it gets a bit shitty. Oh, and being able to do it anonymously, too. Oh, there's yeah. that, too. Yeah, that's an yeah. egg. That, yeah. That's very well said, Andrew. That should go on a card somewhere. I have a way with the words. <laughs> I have just a panache. beautiful, just a panache panache. <laughs> There's, uh, I, I mean, not to get too philosophical, especially since we're about at the hour mark, but uh, stoicism kind of, kind of says what you guys just were talking about, and that is, just expect people not to be awesome in general, and mm-hmm. have that expectation. Don't let that determine how you treat other people. Matter of fact, go out of your way to be kind to people, even expecting them not to be kind back to you and don't ever let don't ever expect others to live up to the set of standards that you put on yourself um Mm -hmm. just know it's out there and know that you are going to encounter these people and they suck (laughs) that's why i like stoicism because in a nutshell that's what they're saying and yeah it's it's very accurate you know you don't have to base the way you treat people on how everyone else is so shitty and it's so hard not to sometimes because Man, like you said, like, you know, like she, she, you know, she's been in a film that's a hit and now she's having to deal with these assholes. And I'm, I can just imagine some of the stuff that's being said to her. And it's, it's just disgusting, you know. I, I had a couple people. I can't imagine wanting... being any kind of celebrity. No. I, I, I had a couple guys Jeez. messaging me wanting Dolly's, uh, personal information. Like, yeah, let me just pull that up for you and send it right over to you. Right. Come on. Hilarious. You know? yeah, no, I, I've, I've had a handful. I'm no, no joke. Um, and one guy still is like, you know, I'm going to have to block him. And it's like, what can, are you doing? <laughs> can you still hide URLs? Like when you write it, can you make it say something else? Do you know what I mean? I, or you're like, oh, click here, and that's all it says, and it doesn't actually say what it is. You can just link them to like Meat Spin or something. <laughs> it's Meat Spin. Oh, isn't it? yeah. <laughs> we, we can bring that back. You know what I mean? Like we can be immature twelve-year-olds on the spin. internet if you guys are going to be fucking assholes. <laughs> you can do that in an email, I think. I don't know if you can do it in like a DM, but maybe. I just, I just know you can always do it on AIM. And man, I sent just the worst stuff to Wesley. <laughs> the worst. As like a seventeen-year-old. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah, we were the we we're always talking about um the stuff we would say to each other back in the day. <laughs> oh, God. Um so um I guess what um 
what kind of contributions are out there left for people to do? And also, uh, please plug your actual um, Indiegogo campaign and your website and everything so people know where they can contribute to Triple Xmas. Yeah, it's xxx mus dot com. Uh, you know, it won't take you to a porn site. It'll take and you. To by, the- by the way, do not just Google xxxmus because. <laughs> Uh, a dash is very important (laughs) if you put the dash in there you should be fine uh that reminds me of the one time i was telling someone i was on a podcast with uh something about blacked.com and they didn't think it was a real site and they pulled it up with their kids in the background i'm like i didn't tell you to do that sir no yeah yeah just go to google oh you gonna learn the day yeah (laughs) just go to google it's x (laughs) <laughs> xxx-mas.com you're fine it'll take you to indiegogo it's okay guys by the way i want to say that i just appreciate your like growth of brevity like where your first movie was fontaine the vengeful one who wouldn't die second one was absolution this was xxx miss that's it yeah 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 i was honestly completely <laughs> shocked that no one has taken this name uh like it, t- that blows me away that that like because when I saw you talking about this idea, I was like, oh, that's interesting. And then, like, I thought, I was like, how the fuck hasn't that? Been? I was like, it's I, so simple and br- it's been there the whole time. Yeah, I, I 100% agree. Uh, so, okay, so <laughs> people can do anything from a special thanks for $10, uh, you know, signed posters, Blu-rays, uh, DVDs. Uh, you can come on as an associate producer, which also gets you, you know, a poster and a Blu-ray and you get the credit in the movie. Uh, screen worn wardrobe. We have uh, we actually have some. Wait, props <laughs> what, kind, what kind of wardrobe are we talking? Here? It's it's funny <laughs> enough that you mentioned that. Um, condoms. Just I've, condoms. No, I've actually we actually had several. We actually had several um, actors who did offer exactly what you're talking about um and indiegogo doesn't prevent that because we actually looked into it but we didn't have enough people that wanted to participate in that and you know it, it, it's it's an interesting thing because we are trying to be very positive about sex workers and sex workers rights so you you can't just be like oh that's not a thing some people sell those you know i you know apparently it's pretty common in japan there's vending machines for it i don't know um but oh we, man, yeah. you should have like branded, like got branded condoms for <laughs> Triple Xmas movie. What about put them on there? What about condoms that are on little hooks that you could put on a tree? Like I say, XXXmas is coming. Yeah, <laughs> you can have these ideas. Take them. <laughs> <laughs> I just need someone that that can uh, design that art for me, and uh, that that that's the cover. I mean, oh, we, we know people. Art? We that's know the... condom design people. Believe you me, buddy. Um, I think I covered most of these. Uh, screen used prop. Um, oh, we have. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any left, but feature a song or a piece of your art in the movie. Mm-hmm. Um. Oh. If you if you live in the Vegas area and you want to go bowling with Drew Marvick, uh, it did it gives you actually quite a few things: uh, associate producer credit, Blu-ray, digital download, poster, and then you get to go bowling with Drew Marvick for an hour. That was his idea, you know. It's pretty um, cool. You can co-produce. So listen, the... I like the bowl. Let him pay for it. Yeah, <laughs> we also threw in a pizza and a you know a thing of beer, you know, a pitcher of beer. You can co-produce the film um we have one executive produce left and then i think we're out of quite a few things um yeah we're, we have the limit of everyone that's participating as far as like coming to act in the film we're out of the vhs copies although andrew if you're serious about it i will do another one for you um but yeah something like you know anything from co-producing for 500 dollars all the way down to a special thanks for 10 dollars. it all adds up it all helps and the weird thing is is not just the dollar amount but also um the amount of contributions sometimes will make a difference also so mm-hmm. you know yeah we're, we're about at 60 percent, and mm-hmm. i know i've spoke to a couple people that i've set, set up uh so we'll be at 20 grand easily before the end of the week just based on a couple That's awesome that week yeah yeah it, it's it's so weird because there's this back and forth where you're talking to people and you're negotiating items and i just spoke to someone who owns the um what is it called? It's the Maximum Overdrive, the movie that Stephen King directed when he was all oh, shit. It out. Yeah, you know the green, the green front yeah. of that. Uh, yeah, the guy that there's a guy that owns that, 
and he's buying the Santa suit from us. He's buying a prop <laughs> shotgun. He's buying he's buying all kinds of That's stuff. It's amazing. And it's going towards the Indiegogo. Yeah, he's waiting. He's selling some other stuff. Uh, but here's even the better part of that is he's opening a museum and it's all going to go in a museum and he wants us to take pictures. That's so behind cool. The, I know, right? That's amazing. And it's going to help support the film. He wants so to- you can buy anything from Trick or Treat, $150,000. <laughs> I will sell I mean, the entire wardrobe. I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think he has that kind of money. I think you're in the, yeah. <laughs> but he wants us to take Damn. behind the scenes photos so he can know how to pose it once it gets to the museum and everything. That's super cool, cool to me. You know? That's like, awesome. Yeah, that's yeah. incredible. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. Just thinking that your something you made uh, you right. know, is going to be part of a museum somewhere. That's yeah. so fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. And he has, I mean, he has quite a few different things like, um, uh yeah he, he has he was sending me all kinds of pictures and videos of his of, the, of all of the collectibles he has and i was kind of geeking out with him a little bit but that's all part mm-hmm. of the process also if you're going to run an indiegogo get ready to talk to a lot of people and Sorry. get ready to block a few people too because there's some weirdos out there that are sure to pop them into the chap chat blah, blah, blah. chat we are going to be wrapping up soon um uh andrew do you have any final questions for uh yes i do actually uh you mentioned a lot of the actresses in the film what are some of the fellas yeah uh well okay so we don't have anyone that's in the industry no Uh, never mind i don't i'm so no i'm I'm, I'm kidding (laughs) uh well well, jonathan may he does stand-up comedy locally uh and then if you know if you're looking for no he actually as a I, I actually will probably see if he has any stuff online because I'm curious. Just you know, as a yeah, fellow yeah, yeah, for sure. Comic. No, he, he does. He does have some stuff online. I know. Um, and then Sean Scott, who's actually an Absolution. Uh, Sean William? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Actually, damn it. No, sorry. Got sorry. Stuff sorry. So, so Sean Scott, Meister. He, he's actually uh, a he, he's an MMA fighter, and he's also he's he has championships with like bodybuilding. So, like, when it came time to figure out who I wanted to play the character of Jackrabbit, someone that's very self-absorbed and, like, watching himself. Like, in his opening scene, he's having sex with uh, his girlfriend, if you want to call it that. Is he Jackrabbit because he fucks like a Jackrabbit? Well, I mean... (laughs) Wes! Spoilers! God! (laughs) I mean, yeah, you might be onto something, Wes. He, um... But think, think, the introduction of him is very similar to American Psycho where the guy's more into himself and looking at himself in the mirror than he is who he's having sex mm. with. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and so, like, I thought, who who do I know that could, like, pull that off and, you know, fall in love with themselves? And I was like, oh, this dude's, like... I know plenty of people like that. <laughs> but do they, but are they, do they have the arms that would, like, sell it? Like, this dude is just, he looks like he would crush any of them. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there we go, right there. Look at Andrew. I've been been hit the gym. It's not, not a big deal. Yes. <laughs> it's not a big deal. I also saw my stomach in Trick or Treat too, you sons of bitches. <laughs> Maybe if we make a sequel and you're willing to take your shirt off, we'll, we'll take your shirt off and you won't have anything covering your face. And there you go. We're not there yet, but... Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. There. I mean, we could also just cover your face if that's what, you, if that's what you're into. We could probably write that scene also. <laughs> It's slowly becoming my thing, not because I wanted to, just more like conditioning. Yeah. Look, we need to do a triple Xmas and a trick or treat two, <laughs> trick or treat two, a trick or treat crossover. <laughs> the magician, the, the magician loves killing. You know what he also loves? Comments <laughs> on browsers, <laughs> exclusive. It's like the weirdest redo of the nightmare before Christmas that nobody asked for. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, Andrew said like trick or treat three gonna need those, right? It's like the, we, we already got our idea now. I mean, it's honestly, like look, we got somebody with money. I we can get those again. It's not a big deal, Andrew. Was that Martin, by the way? Is that the Andrew that that is? Yes. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm glad that that paid off because if that was somebody else, I would have felt real embarrassed. <laughs> this is egg on my face, Mr. Andrew Sanchez. I am so sorry. <laughs> Well, James, um, thanks so much for coming on and chatting with us tonight. I wish you the best of luck with the remainder of your crowdfunding campaign. I know you will um, succeed. So last minute um, plugs or anything, the floor is yours. 
Yeah, I mean, you, if you guys are interested in checking out uh, our first film, you can go to monsterkidfilms.com. You can pick up a Blu-ray there. We actually are going to have some t-shirts finally, finally coming up. Woo! So that'll be kind of nice. Um, yeah, that took only a year. But yeah, <laughs> uh, so we'll, we'll, you know, we have t-shirts and Blu-rays of the, our first film, Fontaine, The Vengeful Nun Who Wouldn't Die. Um, you can find me on Twitter at, at JamesD7004. Um, you know, Facebook, James Dean. That might be kind of hard to track me down, but uh we, we do have a podcast, The Film Hacks. Um, we've kind of been on a hiatus for a month or so. Chris has been super busy, and I've obviously been busy. Fucking Chris. I know, dude. Fucking Chris. Do you know what he told me he was doing? He's working on promotional material for, for a film that you know shot in your area of a pretty big budgeted... Yeah, yeah. What a fucking traitor. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> um yeah so yeah you can find us at all those places and go to xxx com and pick up a perk you know and help us make this film i think that's everything awesome yeah awesome well thanks again james um, no, I, I am it. going to Everybody. keep an eye on your campaign i i know it will get fully funded so um i hope you have a smooth production yeah no it's gonna be interesting man it's gonna be fun though i'm i'm so pumped about i mean i'm i'm a huge gore whore so like the practical effects <laughs> i i get i get way excited you know so yeah yeah but i i really do appreciate everything you've done wes i mean like having me on twice now and just just in general uh your support means a lot yeah, no problem at all i'm sure that once the andrew, movie comes andrew out, i appreciate you too we'll have you on again yeah appreciate you buddy i appreciate you coming <laughs> i hope everything goes well for you and i hope that you always be scooching Oh, always, always, always be scooching. <laughs> Are you gonna ask him? What's yeah? It's, uh, yeah, you're familiar. What's your scooch? What's my yes. scooch today? What's, scooch? What's my scooch? Um, I already say he's a gore whore. I just I was gonna let that one yeah. know. Yeah, you, you know I I know no, you told that, me last time it's whatever it's whatever I want it to mean. So I just started really indulging in Indian food. So my scooch now is Indian food. Oh, I know. So you I just know. scooch to the bathroom is what? Well. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. Scooch to the bathroom. Like a dog with worms in it. <laughs> that's a gland thing, man. That's not worms. What are you talking about? Oh, that's delicious. But, yeah. You know, they say you rent oh Indian God. food. Okay, that's, I'm done. That's. Someone mute him. <laughs> I think that's pretty true about any food, by the way. <laughs> okay, Mr. <laughs> Tenny <Tenicali. laughs> You know how you just be shitting everything? <laughs> Can we change it to always be shit? Is it too late for that? Okay, seriously. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. All right. Um, thanks, everybody, for <laughs> stopping by and hanging out. Um, the making of Trick or Treat 2 is now available. So if you haven't seen it, uh, check it out. If you enjoyed hanging out with us, uh, you know, hit the like button um, and... I, I'm sure you're subscribed, um, but we'll see you next time. <laughs>